college football with Sam is a college football Big Ten football channel. But the Super Bowl is tomorrow, and I want to have some fun and talk about it a little bit. Talk about the spread, talk about the key players, talk about a matchup between two 14 and three teams who have some of the best overall play in the NFL, and also talk about the Big Ten players, former Big Ten players that will be in the Super Bowl, and who I think the Big Ten should root for. I'm going to be using a nice article by Nittany Lions Wire usatoday.com that I will link down below, which lists every Big Ten player who's in the Super Bowl. And I will also link down below ESPN's own game preview, which lists the point spread, what ESPN's NFL football power index thinks. And yeah, I'm just going to have 10 minutes of fun talking about the Super Bowl. Super Bowl 57 puts Patrick Mahomes, who now that Tom Brady is retired, is going to be viewed as by far the best quarterback in the league. It pits him against Jalen Hurts, who was not even a first-round pick, and it is rare that non-first-round picks at quarterback do find success. Brady is one of those anomalies, and Jalen Hurts has found success. Both Mahomes and Hurts are dealing with injuries of their own, Mahomes' ankle is tweaked. Jalen Hurts' shoulder is just not right. But overall, both have had tremendous success this season. Jalen Hurts is fourth in QBR. Mahomes is first. Both are top 10 in passing yards. Jalen Hurts is 10th with 3,701 passing yards. Mahomes is first with 5,250. And keep in mind, these are only statistics that talk about the regular season. Postseason statistics are held at a completely different level. In the regular season, Jalen Hurts also rushed for 13 touchdowns and 760 yards, averaging 4.6 yards per carry. Mahomes in the regular season rushed for 358 yards, four touchdowns, averaging 5.9 yards per carry. Both of these quarterbacks have legs, they have an arm, they have good football IQ, and I have not watched much of the NFL, but again, this is the Super Bowl, and this is a bonus content episode, so bear with me. I'm more so having fun than trying to make a great prediction or have great analysis with this video. I will be predicting a winner here, but I want to save that for the end of the video, although, again... I don't necessarily watch the NFL. I know that games in the NFL are often much more closer than in college where, you know, you can have a game where the number one and number two team, in theory, play each other and 65 to 7 happens. That, that, that doesn't happen in the NFL. In the NFL, you can have a team as dysfunctional as the Texans beat the Chiefs. And that's because, in theory... And really, in practice, the rosters, the depth, the talent on the teams is much more evenly distributed, so to say. But anyway, I'm not here to talk only about the NFL or the Super Bowl in the matchup perspective. I'm also here to talk about who the Big Ten should root for, just as a little fun activity. There are multiple Big Ten teams with former players in the Super Bowl. Michigan has four. Nebraska has three, Wisconsin has two, Rutgers has two, Illinois has one, same with Michigan State, same with Ohio State, same with Purdue, and Penn State. There are a total of 16 former Big Ten players in the Super Bowl, the majority of them starters. Let's start with Michigan. They have three on the Kansas City Chiefs, two defensive ends in Frank Clark and Mike Dana. One quarterback in Chad Henney, who is Mahomes' backup and who has filled in for Mahomes two different times in two past playoff runs for the Chiefs. One game against the Browns, another game against, it wasn't the Bengals, but it was the, Jacks, the Jacksonville Jaguars. He led a, a TD drive down the field to keep the Chiefs having a comfortable lead before Mahomes inevitably came back. 
the Philadelphia Eagles. Michigan has one defensive end in Brandon Graham, who has been with the Eagles since 2010, and he has 11 sacks on the year. For Nebraska, all three of their former players are on the Philadelphia Eagles. Cam Jurgens at center, the Dominican Sioux at defensive tackle, one of the most dominant defensive tackles in the history of the sport, whether at a collegiate level or NFL level. I don't I don't know if there's any defensive tackle who's ever got Heisman, who's ever had Heisman potential like Nagamakan Sue has. If you see it with defensive players, it's cornerbacks like Woodson or, you know, Sanders, or it's defensive ends like Chase Young, the Bosa brothers, Aiden Hutchinson, just because they can rack up stats more. Sue was a beast in college, beast in the NFL as well and also Jack Stoll at tight end. For Wisconsin, the Chiefs have a linebacker in Leo Chanel, who had a fantastic season in 2021 at Wisconsin, and they have another linebacker in TJ Edwards playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Rutgers has Isaiah Pacheco at running back, a guy who wasn't looked at very closely in college football because admittedly he played at Rutgers, but he was picked in the seventh round, And Isaiah Pacheco has 830 rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns, and 170 carries. Since Clyde Edwards-Hilaire has been injured with the Chiefs, Pacheco has filled in his spot very well. And Michael Burton, a fullback, is also with the Kansas City Chiefs. For Illinois, they have one player on the Chiefs roster in Nick Allegretti, an offensive guard. Michigan State has one player on the Eagles in Josiah Scott a good cornerback from, I think, some of the no-fly zone days at Michigan State under Mark D'Antonio. Trey Sermon is Ohio State's lone player, spent most of his career at Oklahoma, but came to Ohio State in 2020, and when he was healthy, he was unstoppable. He is their backup running back behind Penn State's singular player in starter Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders has 1,269 rushing yards, 11 rushing touchdowns, and 259 carries. He was the backup to Saquon Barkley in 2015 and 16, and in his junior year, he earned second All-Big Ten team honors. And Purdue also has one player, defensive end George Karloftis for the Kansas City Chiefs. Eight players, each for Kansas City and the Eagles. Eight players each. If you're a Michigan fan, you're probably going to be cheering for the Chiefs. If you are a Nebraska fan, you're probably going to be cheering for the Eagles. This is, again, just basing off the fact if you only cheer for the team that has the most alumni, which some collegiate fans do, others don't. I'm not going to be doing that here. I'm going to be cheering for the Eagles. And that's what I think the Big Ten should be cheering for, too is the Eagles. Not that it really matters, but just from a fun perspective, listen, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs, they're a lot like Alabama, and they're a lot like Georgia. They're a lot like an SEC school. Dominant, dominant, dominant. And they deserve to be dominant. They can also get annoying rather quickly, whether it's Patrick Mahomes' brother, whether it's the fact that, you know, the Chiefs have kind of taken the place of the Patriots, always being in the Super Bowl conversation. This will be their third Super Bowl appearance, their third in the Mahomes era. Andy Reid's a great coach. I'm not cheering against the Chiefs because I don't like Andy Reid or I don't like who Patrick Mahomes is as a player or person. He's a very good player, and I don't know who he is as a person. But what I can tell you is that the Big Ten, similar to the Eagles, is the underdog in this scenario. I can tell you that the Eagles here, they look, they won a Super Bowl a few years ago, but ever since then, they haven't been in this position. The, you know, the Chiefs, they've been consistent. They have been up at the top. They beat the Bengals in painful fashion because I know the whole world was rooting for the Bengals. Really, not even just focusing on the Big Ten aspect of this, which again, this is just for fun. 
the Eagles are America's team. So I'm rooting for the Eagles to win. The Eagles are favored by one and a half points, which to me doesn't necessarily make sense because A, analytics and any analytics website would tell you the Chiefs are better. And I don't think Mahomes' ankle injury is as much of a problem as Jalen Hurts' shoulder injury. Britton Covey is questionable for the Philadelphia Eagles. For the Kansas City Chiefs, there isn't there aren't any there isn't any new injury reports. The Chiefs allow 20 points per game. They score 29.2. The Eagles score 28.1 points per game. They allow seven. I'm pretty darn confident that it's just exclusively postseason statistics. That's what I'm confident in. As the Eagles, they dominated the 49ers, who had just injury after injury. They killed the New York Giants. The Chiefs have been in two close games with Jacksonville and the Bengals, so maybe that's also baked into the spread. But I want the Eagles to win. I'm just going to pick the Eagles to win just to roll with it. But if the Chiefs win, I won't be surprised. Mahomes is a great player. Andy Reid is a genius of a coach. And we can't forget Travis Kelsey either, who's a tight end that has 12 receiving touchdowns, 1,308 receiving yards, and 110 receptions. And he'll be playing against his brother, who is an offensive lineman for the Philadelphia Eagles, I do believe. So that's going to be cool. It's going to be the Kelsey Bowl. But I'm excited for the Super Bowl. I'm going to be watching it tomorrow night with my dad. The majority of it, it'll be entertaining. Even though I'm not a huge fan of the NFL, I largely prefer college. It'll still be an entertaining game. And I think every Big Ten fan and every college football fan, for that matter, should join me in cheering for the Eagles and cheering for an underrated quarterback in Jalen Hurts to win the Super Bowl. And that's all I have to say for this fun little bonus content episode. Please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you can get notified when I do more short bonus content episodes like this. And also when I go more in depth, get more serious and less fun, though it is still very much fun to do the longer analysis type videos. Be prepared for when I lease release, pardon me, my winter preseason top 25 my winter conference predictions. So hit the notification bell so you can get notified when those videos release. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Go Eagles, and let me know in the comments down below if you would maybe like it if I went live for the Super Bowl. Have a great day.